What's up guys, my name is Daniel Tamago and I'm a final year business student from the National University of Singapore and today we're gonna learn how to get rich. Okay, no, I'm just kidding, but we're gonna learn some essential principles on how to get rich and we'll be returning to one of the classics, Rich Dad Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. What the rich teach their kids about money that the poor and middle class do not. So this book was created for people who want to learn more about financial literacy to share more insights on how an increased financial IQ can help to solve many of life's common problems. And in my opinion, this is an essential book especially for young people to learn more about money. Why are you working for money? And and also how the rich view and manage their money. Now I know that a lot of you guys have heard about this book before but may not necessarily have read it or maybe you have read the book before but forgotten some of the key lessons inside it. So that's exactly what we're going to be discussing in today's video. Before we start, just a little more about my channel. So I make college vlogs about my student life and videos about productivity, study tips, fitness and basically anything relating to self-development. And since I'm a finance major in college as well, I'm also really passionate about personal finance and in Investing. So over the semester while I was studying for my finals exam for a module called Advanced Portfolio Management, I was actually thinking to myself, hmm, actually a lot of the stuff I'm studying in school are actually really valuable information and I thought you guys might find it useful as well. So in fact, I actually set up an Instagram poll and a lot of you guys have requested for me to make more content on personal finance and investing. So I'm working on a series for that. But in the meantime, what better way to start off this journey than to learn more about finance from the classic book and set our financial foundation right. In order to become rich, you first need to learn the essential principles that the rich use to manage their money and from this book, I've taken away four main rules which are number one, the rich don't work for money but rather, they learn how to make money work for them. And how exactly do they do that? The second rule is that the rich acquire assets while the poor and middle class acquire liabilities that they think are assets. And number three, the rich pay themselves first, learn the power of self-discipline. And lastly, the rich invest in financial education it is super important to understand your investments as well. Alright, so let's first start off with the first principle which is the rich don't work for money. So Robert Kiyosaki has two fathers. His real dad was really educated and had a PhD as well. But Robert still called him the poor dad because even though he had a really high paying job, he was always struggling financially. And his other father, the rich dad, which was his best friend Mike's dad, never really finished his 8th grade but eventually became one of the richest men in Hawaii. So both dads strongly believe in education but they had a contrasting point of view. The educated middle class poor dad recommended that Robert go and study hard in school, get good grades, find a good job with a secure company but Robert's rich dad on the other hand recommended that he learn how money works so that he could learn how to make money work for him. Instead of studying hard in school so you could find a good company to work for, rich dad's advice was to study hard so you could find a good company to buy. So the main difference between rich dad and poor dad was that they believe in two different pieces of paper. One strongly believe in education education and getting a degree while the other was really interested in learning his financial statements. So what exactly does principle 1 mean where the poor and middle class work for money but the rich have money working for them? According to the book, there are three types of income in the world of accounting and that is ordinary earned income which is taxed the most, portfolio income which is income derived from paper assets such as stocks and bonds and lastly passive income which is taxed the least, mostly derived from real estate investments. By what it means that the rich don't work for money but rather have their money work for them simply means taking the money earned from their jobs and putting them into assets to generate portfolio and passive income which are extra cash flows. So the key to becoming wealthy is the ability to quickly convert your earned income into passive or portfolio income as soon as possible. And how exactly do you do that? By buying assets. The rich acquire assets while the poor and middle class acquire liabilities that they think are assets. That is the most important rule if there's only one thing that you're gonna take away from this video is that you must know the difference between an asset and a liability. An asset puts money into your pocket while a liability takes money out of your pocket. And if you want to become rich, simply spend your life buying and building assets. So I learned these two very important financial statements in accounting. One is your income statement, also known as the business profit and loss statement. And the second is your statement of financial position, also known as your balance sheet, which represents your assets, liability, 
liabilities and equities of the business at a given point in time. For our personal financial statements, the same thing applies. We each have our own personal income statement and balance sheet. This is the game of life, our monetary net worth. And these two financial statements are very neatly simplified in the book by Robert Kiyosaki. So what kind of assets does Robert Kiyosaki suggest that we acquire? Anything that has value, produces income or appreciates and has a ready market such as paper assets which are stocks, bonds, mutual funds and ETFs, commodities like gold and oil, income generating real estate, royalties and businesses that do not require your presence. Which means that you own the business but they are run and managed by other people. If you still have to work there then it's not considered a business, it is still considered your job because you are still trading time for money. This is the cash flow pattern of a poor person. You work a job, earn a salary and spend all of it on expenses, living paycheck to paycheck. And this is a cash flow pattern of the middle class. You work a job, earn a salary and spend a ton of it on liabilities like your mortgage loan, car loans, credit card debt, which in turn generates more expenses that takes even more money out of your pocket. And finally, this is the cash flow pattern of the rich. They immediately invest their income into assets, which in turn generates a whole ton of passive and portfolio income on their own. Also, another huge misconception is that the house you are living in is an asset, but in actual fact, it's a liability because it generates more expenses that takes money out of your pocket. So a lot of Singaporeans are asset rich but cash poor. In actual fact, we are all poor because it's very hard to monetize an asset if you are living in it. But we'll talk more about real estate in another video. One more time, let's drill this in again. The rich earn income and put their money into assets that creates more income big enough to cover their monthly expenses and the balance is reinvested into the asset column. And the more this asset column grows, the income it produces grows with it. Hence, the rich get richer and eventually they are able to retire very early because their money is working for them. Instead of trading your time for money, you are actually making money become a slave for you. And in fact, the money is becoming an employee by making more money back for you. And the best part about money is that it works 24 hours a day and can work for generations. So once money goes into the asset column, never take it out. Just an example, over the circuit breaker lockdown, I actually put quite a big portion of my savings into Tesla stock. And since then, my portfolio has more than doubled up, creating more than $10,000 out of thin air and contributing significantly to paying off my student debt. So this is a great example of how putting money into the asset column helps to create portfolio income out of thin air. And once your assets go up, you should immediately try to pay off your liabilities as soon as possible. All in all, focus on keeping your expenses low, try your best to reduce your liabilities and diligently focus on creating a strong base of assets. Finally, moving on to principle number three, which is the rich pay themselves first. The middle class struggle financially because they focus on increasing their primary source of income and as their wages increase, so does their taxes and expenses proportionately. And then they incur more debt which in turn creates more expenses, hence they get stuck in the rat race. This is called lifestyle inflation. This is also where delayed gratification comes in to separate the rich and the poor. The poor earn their income and immediately splurge on luxury items such as big houses, fancy cars and clothes to look rich. While the rich build their asset columns so strong that once these assets start to create a lot of income, they can then use this money to buy fancy and luxury items. So the secret to finally escaping the rat race is when the cash flow from your assets exceeds the expenses from your liabilities and your monthly living expenses, only then will you be financially free. In order to do this, self-discipline is also really important if you cannot control yourself. There is no point in investing and earning so much money if you're just gonna blow it anyways. So if you guys would like some actionable results on how to track your money and investments using Excel sheets, you can check out this video on how I budget my money as a college student after you watch this video. Technology and robots are changing the game and millennials are slowly starting to learn the hard facts of life. No longer does a college education guarantee you a job as we have seen from the ongoing global recession. But the sad thing is that most people still spend the rest of their lives working for money not knowing exactly what they are working for. So school doesn't teach you about money unless you are taking a finance major like I am. School and education only teaches you how to make money but never teaches you how to manage your money. So you can strike the lottery, get a high paying job or get really lucky with Bitcoin but money without financial intelligence is money soon gone and thus it's really important for everyone to start learning financial education. Financial IQ is made up of knowledge from four broad areas of expertise and that is accounting which is understanding financial statements as we discussed earlier, investing, the science of money making more money, 
understanding markets, the science of supply and demand, human behavior and economics, and finally, the law, understanding tax advantages and protection from lawsuits. And thankfully, business school has well equipped me with these four areas of financial intelligence, which I intend to impart to you guys over the course of 2021. So smash the like button and subscribe because it's gonna be a crazy ride. So now that we have went through the financial foundations, Robert also recommends that everyone should learn how to become an investor if you want to become rich, regardless of whether you are an employee or an entrepreneur. So it's really key for you to understand your investments and don't just blindly copy whatever you see on the internet. For example, for my Tesla holdings, I have done a lot of fundamental research about the company and really understood my investment thesis and long-term proposition before having the conviction to throw a huge portion of my savings into the company. So investing is all about weighing your risk and returns. For me, I'm just gonna buy and slowly dollar cost average into Tesla over the years, but that's for another video. All right, so let me just end off this video by clarifying that I'm not rich, at least not yet. Robert would definitely classify me into the poor and middle class for now. But that being said, when it comes to your personal finance journey, it's best to start younger. It's definitely much easier to become rich if you are younger as you have a longer investment horizon and wealth accumulation period. There's a staggering difference between a person who starts investing at 20 versus age 30. All right, so finally, I'm also doing a mini giveaway. I'm giving away this book, my personal favorite. So this video only highlights the essential principles on how you can get rich, but there are also a lot more interesting stories and lessons that can be found within this book. So if you guys are interested, go and check out my latest Instagram post at Daniel Tamago. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know in the comment section if you found this valuable and I'll see you guys next week. Today, how? The floor or him? And today, we're gonna learn how to get rich. Yeah. <laughs>